Hi, my name is Florine, and I'm a developer. And I'm Adrian, and I'm a designer. And today, we're going to talk about the death of Lorem Ipsum. But before we get into, you know, killing a piece of text... Uh, it's quite a sad affair, actually. It is a bit sad. Uh, it has some, you know, something poetic about it. First, let's kill ourselves by um, drinking something called swamp juice. The color alone is ghastly. Look at this. Is this like sewage color? Yeah, it, I think they, they have, you know, a person who does engineering on this. It's like, I got the perfect swamp color for the soda. <laughs> but I, I generally make it a point not to drink something that has a pun in its name. And this is called, it's so disgusting. Swamp juice. Yeah. Not I mean, that swamp juice would seem appealing without the so disgusting. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. And even on the, uh, on the cap, when I open it, I noticed that it says totally gross soda on the cap. So. Is that some reverse psychology thing going on there? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. Swiss, here goes nothing. This might end abruptly or okay. with projectile vomiting. <laughs> Not as bad as I imagine. It tastes like molten down gummy bears. Carbonated molten down gummy bears. Yeah, like rapid infused molten gummy bears. That's that's an accurate description. Lorem Ipsum, right? Lorem Ipsum, yeah. I mean, we've been in this business quite a long time, and in those years, uh, we have served up quite a bit, a bit of Lorem Ipsum, Ipsum to our clients. Uh, so you know, in in designs, yeah. So, so when you make a design comp, you it's not something you would you know put in production. It's like <laughs> oh, we put it live with some Latin text in it. That's I cool. have seen websites that have the, that. Then yeah, where where someone mistakes, forgot, forgot, forgot. forgot to remove it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But why, why did you use Lorem Ipsum? Well, um, Lorem Ipsum is mostly used... What do you use it for? Um, it's mostly used to substitute missing content. So if you, someone has not supplied content, or if content has yet to be made, or whatever, you can use it as filler text. Okay. So you would have, you know, all headings that say Lorem Ipsum, Lorem Ipsum, Lorem Ipsum, and then you have body copy that says Lorem Ipsum, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And then, you know, as a designer, I, I tend to change the headings to a different line of the text from Lorem Ipsum because otherwise they, all the headings would say the same, which feels weird to me. I mean, that was a visual improvement, but practically yeah. I don't... And sometimes you want to be clever and then you use one of the different uh, Lorem Ipsum generators, like the Samuel Ipsum generator. Or we're the... also killing that one. <laughs> it has to go. Okay. Because basically what we're talking about is we want... Actually, we've been doing this for, uh, I think, past two, three years, we've been working on this, uh, this strategy to work content first. So we work from existing content-driven con design. Exactly, content-driven design. So uh, what that means is that we use uh, representative samples. It doesn't have to be the actual content of a page. It, it can be uh, text that comes from a similar page. So if you have like... Um, no, but it, it, it has to be functionally the same, right? Functionally the same. So for instance, uh, let's say you have two products in, a, in an online shop and they have mm -hmm. descriptions, uh, you could use the same description for both of those examples. And the same goes for images. I mean, I could use the same images if I, yeah. if I wanted to do that. But, it, but the important thing is, okay, we're talking about a product here, so let's put product content in there. Exactly. What but, would an actual product, what kind of content would that have? So and like, I'm not, yeah. not only talking about length, but also what types of content would it have? Specs, would it have a descriptive text? Um, would it have subtitles? You know, all kinds of stuff could, could happen. Okay, but that, that, that also means that before you start to, yeah, this has an implication on your design process. Because yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. before you start uh, making a design, you'd have to uh, do some kind of inventory or, you know, you have to know what content is there because one of the problems I, um, when you're doing a project, uh, some of the things I saw is that, okay, the designer thought, Yep, these product pages would have lengthy descriptions, but when in fact... It would look nicer all, if you had some text on this side because that frames the, yeah. the rest of the page cover or something. In, in reality, the, 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 in the database, would be very crappy descriptions or maybe just one or two lines. Uh, or none at all. Or none at all and just specifications. Yeah. And so we had a design and we had to strip out stuff later and that mm. would just not look as good as... No, it has implication on how, how things yeah. look and you can better... Uh, designed for like the worst case scenario. I mean, if it's more text, then great. If yeah. not, that at least make it look good, even if it's very, very yeah. sparse in content. And I mean, for for me as a designer, putting in uh, a block of lorem ipsum 
cost me literally three seconds. Uh, writing a good, <laughs> good amount of content for anything is, is well, it, co it costs a lot of time. So, okay, but I do understand correctly that you're writing as a designer, you're going to write the text yourself, or, or, uh, no. or does that vary? Um, sometimes it helps to, like, I can write a heading, uh, so I, it would be sort of representative. Okay. Um, but even then, I prefer not to. I mean, it would help explain what this heading would say or in what context that would, would mm -hmm. fit uh, when I'm presenting it to the client. But even then, I'm making stuff up. I don't, I don't know if this is going to actually be the way that they are going to make up these pages. So for, for, uh, for me to just say, oh, well, we can do text here and header there, that's, that is going to put a lot of pressure on the people who are actually content managing or, or creating content creation. Because they're like, yeah, we, well, here's a, you know, a bottle of totally gross soda. We're going to have to write four paragraphs on how gross this soda is. That's just. That's just. It's not going to happen no. in the end. So, um, luckily, uh, recently we've done we've done mostly projects where this was not so much an issue because we've been working on a lot of redesigns. So we are relaunching. But that's a perfect example of uh, when you're doing a redesign, you already, and that's great that you already have content, mm -hmm. so it's quite easy to use that content. Maybe yeah. it needs to change format a bit, but you have a general idea of what's there. Um, uh, for instance, in a uh, certain pages you have, okay, you have some specifications, you have uh, some, uh, some descriptions, stuff, you have yeah. a list of stuff, you have maybe exactly. some related content. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> maybe some files in there, you know, yeah. there could be uh, images. Uh, there's, there's, you know, you have, you have like a benchmark of what it's going to be in there. So yeah. it's, you have some representative contact. Even if, let's say, uh, you do a relaunch and of a, or a redesign of a page and they're going to expand massively, even then, with the small amount of data you have, you can still design for these cases. And you know what quality the design is, how the exactly. content is, yeah. I mean. Uh, but even if they have, even if they're going to expand or if they're going to do rewrites as well, and if they're going to change their content strategy, um, you have some idea of the level of quality of content they will are going to produce and can produce exactly. based and, and on what they have. I mean, in text, this is this is a bit harder to gauge, uh, but I I notice that especially when you're using images and if you're using like uh, really high end stock images, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, that often these are not representative of what uh, many pages can actually supply. So uh, so for instance, so for instance, if you have um, um, I don't know if you have like a thousand sub pages, then probably not every page will have. Will have the, that great image that you picked out for the design, which you actually sold the design with, and, yeah. and in the end it might be a blurry phone pic. You know, it it, it could happen, uh, and then your design will probably look less than stellar. And that is actually one of my big pains because I I often find that um, using representative context content is important because it sets realistic expectations for the client. Also for myself, it's a mm -hmm. good, good gauge to know what's going to happen, what needs to happen here. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if I put in lorem ipsum, it's not going to take away from my design. It doesn't degrade my design in any mm -hmm. way. If I put in a shitty image that might very well pop up on the actual live site, yeah. that might ruin uh, an otherwise fine design just by being an ugly picture. Yeah, but you're being realistic, so you can tell your client, okay, this is a case you that have could to, occur. Yeah. yeah, and you have to invest in, uh, in in photography or in in illustration or or buy stock or or, or we have to change the design. Um, and of course, in some cases, you know that they won't have the content, so you're not going to use a lot of exactly. fancy images in the first place. That's that's actually uh, an excellent point that you bring up because. If you know they don't have good photography, then it's good. You have to. You can actually find ways around. Like if you know they're they're probably going to have bad imagery, you can design around that mm -hmm. by like applying less imagery or do something to them yeah. with filters or overlays. Or I, I'm just thinking out loud here, but you can sort of mask so the bad. So mitigate the problem exactly, yeah. so, and make it. There's also a thing you ha you have to make it easier for people who are content creators. If you make it a pain for them to fill your pages, they will make shitty pages. They will make bad pages. Uh, so it's on our interest to to 
be you know kind to uh, content creators because they yeah. are going to populate yeah. our website and our, our designs basically so but that does, that also means that in a very early stage of the project you have to involve these people because um, Absolutely. And with these people, I mean, of course, the content creators and co or content managers, because yeah. they are the ones that are going they're, that are going to make to fill in the content mm -hmm. um, once the site is built. Yeah. I mean, you're at the very beginning, at the very one of the very first stages in a whole website project. Absolutely. Uh, and the content managers and content creators, mm -hmm. they will be at the end of the line because they will enter the content and then they'll probably publish the website, uh, the web pages. Yeah, but th there, there's also some weirdness in there for me because um, some who have been following us for a while, they probably know that we are very big fans of involving uh, people with different skill sets at a very, very early stage. Mm -hmm. So not just, you know, go to a designer who then tosses it over the fence to a, a developer who will then chuck it onwards to a content creator who will then have to fill in all the missing, missing bits. Missing bits, yeah. Um, and the same thing that applies to why designers need developers very early on also applies to why designers and developers need content creators early on. Because for me to, to like make up a field where there's text is very easy. I can just, oh, well, it looks better this way and I can just... Let's add some lines more. That will yeah, look just add better. some lines. Yeah. Uh, but it would be much better for me to actually ask this person, present it to someone and then ask, is this realistic? Can you actually produce this content? Will this be something that is even feasible in the time frame that we have, uh, within the, the budgets, budgets that we yeah. have, uh, and you know, within the manpower, really? Because content creation is, is a hard job. It's a lot of work, especially if you want to make good quality content. So I think it's very important to actually get these people on board early, because these are the people who are actually going to work with the site later on. And so work with your design. It's their yeah. site, basically. Yeah. So we have to accommodate them. We have to make sure that it's that it's good for them to work in and not a pain so they don't make shitty pages after that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, how, how would you, how, how are you going to do that? Um, how are you going to make sure that um, when you're going to design a page or uh, design a feature or whatever, um, how are you going to make sure that everybody is on the same page and that you will have the same measure to measure the success of that page. I mean, because that's what matters in the end. Is yeah. this a successful design, successful page? And that can only work if the content creators, the uh, implementers, the designers are all on the same page. Mm -hmm. well, are we talking like a new thing or a redesign? In a redesign, it will be probably be easier. Okay, let's talk about. We have already talked about the, the redesign. Re redesign. Yeah. So, so let's talk. Let, let's say we're building a new website. New, yeah, and that's for many people. I think that's a, like a chicken or the egg uh, issue because they'll be like, yeah, without the design, how will we know what content will will need? Uh, and on the other hand, uh, without the content, how will we know what we need to design? So it's 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 a bit weird. So I personally like to start out with uh, an an inventory. So you start listing uh, this page or this feature, what does it need to contain? What is, what is the, the minimum amount? Because we're also always talking about the minimum amount of content uh, you absolutely have to have for this page to work, to make sense to a user. Okay. Uh, but for that, you need to have uh, the content creators and managers and everyone else, you need to have them in a room. But this is on quite an abstract level. This is going to be like, okay, it's going to have a description, going to have a title, going to have a subtitle, oh, it needs this as a metadata, metadata like a yep. date or a location or et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, so this is on a very abstract level. You're not, at this point, you're not writing content together. No, not at all. No, no. Um, even, even then, uh, it helps. It's also a good, good guideline for the content creator to know what is going to be asked of him later on. And I will ask, if I can, I will ask them to create a, a sample of something. So we will agree on, okay, for this page, can you write me sample content? Sample yeah. content, even if it's just for the one page, and there might be thousands of pages later on. Yeah. But just so I know what am I what is the material that I'm working with? What am I designing around basically? Okay. And basically that when we make inventories, we, we have to think very, very hard about uh, what is the goal of a page. And I think uh, our friend Stephen Hay actually wrote about this in his book, uh, Responsive Workflow. 
uh, we have to think about, well, uh, from a user perspective, mm -hmm. what do we expect? What do we want when we get to this page? We have to think very hard and very carefully about that. And how do we convey the information that we need to convey? And how do we reach our goals? Exactly. So what is basically we're t talking about how do we reach our goals in the least amount of effort, in the least, least amount of images, and least amount of text. Uh, because especially large sites, every line that you write costs time and money. So the, usually less content is better. And we're, we're also in an age where like media consumption is very quickly. Mm -hmm. and you like to like scroll through it very quickly. OK, you're talking about text content. Um, I just recently, uh, uh, well, you were there as well. We had a client that was uh, uh, where we uh, focused too much on, uh, on text um, when they actually say, yeah, but we want to inspire. How do you handle that? Because you're talking, all, you're, you said now a couple of times, OK, minimal, uh, what's the minimum amount? But they said, OK, but we want to inspire, so we need uh, yeah. You need you need some some uh, way Body. to spruce yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, that is 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 a difficult question. But that is that again is a goal. content question and also ties in with that with that goal. Exactly. So it usually helps to define your goals before you actually start talking about well, what kind of blocks of of information go where, or yeah. even what kind of blocks of information are there. Period. Uh, and so. In this in this instance, uh, we should have probably changed the conversation at an earlier stage because we went forth and back. But in the end, we we got to actually know what they wanted. We we talked about it and we found out what their goals are for these pages, and then we started talking about okay, this is the content we need to achieve this. And what do we have to put on the page? Yeah, exactly. So okay, and you're going to actually um, work with ugly content sometimes. So in, in many cases, uh, we, can, we can design fantastically beautiful pages, but the content manager will add a, a giant table to it right in the middle. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that is something that we can design for. For this instance, we can actually make that look better by anticipating that, they're that going, need. Yeah. They need, may need to add a table there. Yeah. And this is actually a, an interesting point, because I think using real content is also a great stress test for your design. Because I can I can adjust content to make my design look better, like we talked about before with the images, or mm. just ah a few more lines of lorem ipsum here would be great. Uh, but if I use the actual content, the actual or representative content, or representative content, yeah, yeah that's basically what I mean. Uh, you can actually find out where the limits are of your design, where you, your design will break, and yeah, where will it go wonk? And that is that is really interesting to know, especially to know up front. Because it's going to be a very difficult conversation when I present something to a client and sell it to them, uh, and this is being built, and afterwards they come back to me and they're like, "Yeah, that's nice, but it doesn't look at all like what you designed because we don't have this content, or we we have different content, or whatever." Yeah, then you're going to say, "Yeah, but you know, my my designs are just." Theoretical content, representations yeah, yeah, yeah. of what it's going to yeah. be. The problem is in your content. And, yeah. Um, it. I, I think it's neither in that in those cases because mm. it's not a problem of the content. It's not a problem of the design. It's just they were not in the same room or at the same table. They didn't talk. at the right at the right moment. Yeah. Exactly. They didn't talk to each other at the right moment. Yeah. That's a bit. That's that's something that you can really easily improve by having a when include all relevant parties up front in a design process yeah. or in any build, actually in, in the whole project. Yeah, if you make something, you have to talk to the people who are going to work, be working with it. Yeah. And that's, that's very important. And uh, I think this is also something that is, that is very often forgotten. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. I mean, you can just, you could, theoretically, it could be like a 30 minute meeting and you go briefly through what you're going to make, depending on what you're actually making. But you could do it fairly quick and fairly dirty. And the pain it will save you in the end it's will be, be worth those 30 minutes or 60 minutes that you invest now to actually make this good. Yeah. I think, I think that that's really good advice. And I think that's... It sounds I, reasonable. I, I hope... Even though I said it. <laughs> even, even, even if. Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, <laughs> OK, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And thanks to our sponsor, DigitPaint and Asphalt Photo.